Hey y'all, welcome to the Ginger Walkabout. I'm the Ginger. That's Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. And that is Lucille. She is a 2020 Winnebago Travato 59 GL that we have been living in full time since August of 2019. This is my day in the life series where I give you the real scoop about what it's like to live full time on the road. All right, well, we are I believe we're in a bison jam. Welcome to Yellowstone. That's right, y'all. I did Yellowstone. Five nights, six days in the world's first national park. So I really couldn't do my normal routine of showing up and recon and that kind of stuff because Yellowstone's just too big. It's just too big. So you kind of got to take it in sections, in chunks. Um, and that's what I did. Uh, so I entered from Gardner in the north, uh, cause I was up there seeing my friend Tara, uh, and I hit Mammoth Hot Springs first. You know, I just didn't film it all. You know why? Cause I just didn't, I wasn't feeling it. I wanted to relax. I wanted to enjoy. I wanted to take it in. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's cool. Go, go see the Hot Springs area. Uh, there's the lower terraces which has got more to see and boardwalks you can walk around on. And then there's the upper terraces drive. Now, here's a tip. That says that RVs can't go on it, and vans are perfectly fine. Um, anything in the park, basically, that says no RVs, I'd totally take my van in and did in quite a few of them. Um, so don't worry about that. No RVs does not mean the van. Uh, anyway, and so um, I checked into my campground. I was staying two nights at Canyon and three nights at Grant Village. Um, so when I was there, they have 12 campgrounds. And when I was there, only four of them were open. Um, and part of it, um, is because the COVID, I think part of it is also that because they didn't know when they would be able to open or if they would open, uh, that they just couldn't get the staffing. They couldn't get people there, um, in order to run them and clean them and all that. Um, speaking of cleaning, um, and I'm not sure I was totally aware of this before I got there. Uh, none of the showers were open. So, um, there's only one full hookup par, uh, campground in Yellowstone and it's closed for the season for construction. Uh, so, uh, not having hookups and, uh, makes it real hard for me to shower in the rig. Um, and, uh, yeah, the shower's closed. They said it was because of like a state requirement but then when I left and was down in the Tetons, their showers were open. So I think they just either didn't want to or have the staff to, to clean them more regularly. Anyway, whatever. Like everybody, these, these campgrounds are huge. Everybody was in the same boat as me of the not showering. It was only in the 70s. I wasn't, you know, doing that much crazy hiking. So yeah, I just didn't shower. Whatevs. Um, another thing about the, uh, campgrounds in Yellowstone, the ones that you can make reservations for anyway, uh, they're actually concessionaire run. They're not run by the park service. Um, and when you make your reservation, uh, I both, in both campgrounds, I reserved the, uh, 20 foot RV site, which was plenty. It was, the van fit just fine, even though the van is technically, you know, 22, feet or you know with the bike and everything 20 foot space was more than sufficient for uh lucille so don't don't stress about that just book, book whatever size site you want the smallest is down to 20 feet for rvs you'll be fine i will say if you're bigger than that if you're not in a van uh, <laughs> then it gets a little more serious on the site selection and reservations because i tell you what i saw some big class a diesel pushers at grant village Oh, Lordy, they were crammed in these spaces between these trees, couldn't open their slides. I don't even know how they got them in there. And I tell you what, van is just the way to go at Yellowstone and really all the national parks. It's just it's so much easier, y'all. All right, so uh, yeah, I checked into Canyon Campground. Super easy, got my spot. Um, and literally, you know, getting getting set up. 
And within like 15 minutes, I look up because I see like movement outside the window. And I look up and this is what I see. These insanely giant elk. First I saw the one and then all of a sudden he had a friend like coming up behind me. Whiskey Dog was like, what the what is happening? Uh, I'm not kidding. These things were ginormous. I, 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 sir, I, the, the, the span of the, the horns just, I can't even, antlers. I guess they're antlers, not really horns. Anyway, I was hoping to see some elk, uh, thinking I would in the Pacific Northwest, and I never did. And then I got to Yellowstone, and boom, right as I walk in, here they are, just strolling through the campground. Uh, scared some people coming out the bathroom. Anyway, they just, they didn't care. They just meandered right on through. Off they went. So, on my way down to Yellowstone, I was talking to uh, one of my cousins, and uh, he and his family had gotten last-minute reservations to come up to Yellowstone, just completely coincidentally. Um, so, we overlapped by a day. They were staying at the lodge. Um, so, I met up with them, and we went over to explore the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. Um, I was just trying to enjoy my time with family, so I didn't, like, film a bunch, record a bunch. I mean, you can look at pictures. You don't need me for that. Um, definitely not to be missed. I mean, it's, it's really cool. A couple of waterfalls and, uh, some cool trails you can hike down into the canyon. Um, and then on the way out, this guy's just hanging out, cruising through the parking lot and in the trees. It's the biggest basin I saw the whole time I was in the park. It was nuts. Uh, and then after we did our hike, uh, I suggested that uh, maybe we just go grab some supplies from uh, the local little concession store there. And we went back to my campsite and we had a campfire and the kids loved it. And we did, my cousin cooked uh, hot dogs and we had s'mores and enjoyed the campfire uh, and just hang out. So... That was awesome. It was, you know, it was great to have uh, my family with me to explore part of the park. Um, and a total coincidence that they ended up there and that we were staying in the same area. So it was great. Uh, so the next day, you know, I just took it easy. I just chilled out. Um, but since there's no hookups, there's no electricity. And here's the point. You can't idle your engine. So I can't, I couldn't use my auto start or any of that, or my underhood generator to make electricity. So I had to drive uh, in order to charge up my batteries. So um, I took off, went south uh, through the Hayden Valley towards uh, Yellowstone Lake, and that's where I encountered the bison herd. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your buffalo crossing. Yes, people, please run at the buffalo. They love that, especially the baby buffalo. Are y'all crossing? What are you doing, baby buffalo? No? You gonna sit there? Oh, oh, nope, nope, nope. Mama's going. Cool. You see the buffalo? Look, look, right there. What's that? What's that? That's not a very big buffalo. It's a tiny buffalo. That's all right. Still a buffalo. There goes the baby buffalo. There goes mama buffalo. Alright, nobody else is coming. Coop. What do you think, Bug? What do you think? Is that a buffalo? Do we see the buffaloes? The whole herd trying to come down the mountain. Trying to get something to drink. Oh. Oh, there's some some buffalo antics going on. They are all up on a hill. The rangers got it under control though. They're good. I love the rangers are like, uh -uh. quit with the stupid. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm like also looking at, you know, buffalo families. My dog wants to see the buffalo, ranger. Let my dog see the buffaloes. Thank you. Uh, so I went down to the top of the lake and then out towards the east entrance. Again, just driving to charge up my batteries and see more of the park. Uh, it's still a little bleak out there um, from the fires that they've had um, in past seasons, uh, but it's still a nice drive. 
uh, and then back up and uh, back through the basin, which are still just hanging out by the road. All right, so now we're back in a buffalo jam. Not because the buffalo are on the road, but because of these morons who are blocking the road in the effort to take the pictures of the buffalo. This, ladies and gentlemen, is how you get the videos online of people being gored by buffalo. This. This is the slowdown. This is the problem. Th this person is the reason for the traffic jam. There are no buffaloes on the road. There are people parked on the road making it hard for us to get through here. But, you know. <sighs> oh, look at this guy. This guy's not even, he is not even halfway off the road. <sighs> really, ma'am? Really? That's where you're parking? Halfway on the road. Oh, are we flossing at blocking traffic? Okay. No one was flossing her teeth. Not even looking at the buffalo. I assume she sent her children to look at buffalo. She's flossing her gum teeth. Blocking half the road. What's wrong with people? Uh, so on the day I was moving from Canyon uh, to Grant Campground, um, I stopped by Nora's Geyser Basin. Um, so this may be one you're tempted to skip, but don't. This is cool. Uh, it is the hottest and most active uh, thermo area in the park, um, and. So, I, you know, things are, the geysers are going off. There's cool trails that go around the whole thing. Um, and it's not as crowded as some of the other areas. Um, so, yeah, no, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, just walking around this, this really cool area. All right. So then uh, following day, I uh, stayed at Grant Village, then drove back out. It was like 20 miles each way every day, which was fine. I was charging up my batteries. Um, but yeah, with campgrounds not open, you just kind of got to deal with it. Um, so then I went, uh, up to the Midway Geyser Basin, uh, to the Grand Prismatic Pool. Now here's the big tip. If you learn anything from me, this is it. Do not waste your time going to the actual pool. Like, you're gonna, like, parking is nuts. They're lined up all on the road. Um, and then you're gonna stand in line on the boardwalk waiting for all the people who, no one's wearing a mask, no one's social distance, nothing. Uh, and then you're gonna get around and you're finally gonna get to these, like, two little benches where you can climb up on the bench and hold your camera up over your head and try to take a picture of the thing. And this is what you're going to see. Nothing. Nothing. All you did was meander around on a boardwalk because you had to get up high to see it. All right. So here's what you do instead. You need to go to the Overlook that they built a few years ago. All right. It's off the Fairy Falls Trail, which also has abysmal parking. Uh, again, says no RVs, doesn't mean the van would have been fine if there was an open parking space, which there wasn't. So I parked on the road, and I hoofed it, and I went up there with all the people who are not social distancing or wearing masks, so I wore mine. So up here is where you get the iconic Grand Prismatic Pool photo with all the beautiful colors of the rainbow in it. So do not waste your time going to the actual pool just go up to the overlook and see it from there. Uh, so at some point, you're going to want to get away from the crowds. At least I did. Um, and so there are some little um, side roads that you can take. Um, and again, they're going to say no RVs. You're fine in a van. I actually saw on a couple of them some actual RVs. But, you know... It's more for the hairpin turns, I think, than anything. And in the van, totally fine. Um, so I went to, I went around Firehole Lake Drive. 
Uh, beautiful little area. Um, great fountain geysers over there. I didn't see the geyser go off because it was like a four hour window and I just wasn't willing to sit around and wait for four hours. Now when I was there, best I could tell, most of the geysers that were had a predicted time were going off at the, towards the end of the time. So if it had a four hour window, it was going off at like the three hour and 30 minute mark. Um, anyway, that, that could not be totally accurate all the time. It's just when I was there, that's what was happening. Anyway, um, but yeah, check out those little side roads and stuff if you have the time. You get away from the crowds. I literally just parked out there, read a book for a little bit and chilled, uh, and then went on with my day. Uh, so I saved the upper geyser basin, uh, for my last full day. That's, you know, the main area. Um, the National Park Run Visitor Center was closed. Of course, all the concession run stuff was open. All your t-shirt shops and your, uh, horrible food places and whatnot. Um, anyway, so when you get there, you gotta check the geyser schedule because there's like five geysers that they actually predict when they're gonna go off. Um, so, you know, you're gonna want to check to see when those are going off. I didn't like purposely plan my entire day to see all of them or whatever, but um, if something was gonna go off in the general vicinity, I wanted to make sure I saw it because I was right there. The National Park has an app that will also do the predictions of the geysers. The only problem is there's no cell service in this part of the park. The only place I had any kind of cell service was up at Canyon. The rest of it is you're going to have four bars of signal, but it's totally unusable. You can't connect anything. Nothing works. So just because you have the bars, remember, does not mean that you have a uh, usable service. So I never could get it to work for me, um, except when I was up in the canyon area. But who knows? Maybe you'll have better luck. Anyway, so the first thing you're going to see when you walk in is Old Faithful. There she is. So when I was there, it was going off about every 90 minutes. So I had about 20 minutes when I arrived. Um, and here's another tip. Do not sit on the bleachers that are around the thing with all the people. Unless you got like little kids or you're just there for a minute and you just got to seal faithful and then roll out. You need to go up to the observation point. It's a lovely little hike through the forest. Well marked. Easy to get up there. Go up to the observation point. And then you can see Old Faithful. So here you go. Here's your official Old Faithful eruption video. Enjoy. All right. So then you can follow the trail over to Solitary Geyser. Now, Solitary Geyser's sign said that this thing erupted like four feet every, you know, and would go off every like 15 minutes. So I was like, cool. I'll sit there and watch it go off. It was somewhat disappointing. Right, so once you get off that little observation solitary geyser trail, you'll be back down on the regular boardwalks with all the people, and you're just gonna meander through what looks like, you know, some otherworldly surface of a planet type geyser area. There's tons of geysers. Most of them don't do very much. Um, but occasionally you'll like look across and then something will just start going off and going crazy. Um, I thought I was really lucky to get to see the grotto geyser go off. Uh, turns out that thing goes off like continuously for days, <laughs> like literally 24 hours it goes off. So yeah, it was going off when I walked by and it was still going off when I walked on my way back. So that one was, that one's an easy one. Um, and then I headed out, basically the end of the trail is the morning glory pool, which is lovely, big sign telling you about how people have totally screwed it up by throwing stuff into it, and those signs uh, on several of the features in Yellowstone. So yeah, don't throw stuff into the geysers and the pools, leave them alone. Um, and then uh, I knew that the Riverside geyser was about to go off. So, on my way back, I actually ended up realizing that you could see it from the bridge over the river. So, 
If you're going, go past the viewing area for the Riverside Geyser towards the Morning Glory Pool, and you can stop on the bridge and see Riverside Geyser go off. Uh, and there's no people there. Then it goes off for like 20 minutes. So then, you know, once it goes off, people are like, okay, I'm done after for, you know, a couple minutes and then they leave. And then you can go back to the viewing area to get a closer look. It's still going to be people everywhere, um, but it's going to be a little less people. And I think the river view is, is you know, kind of nice. All right. So here's a little note about traffic and parking at the uh, Upper Basin Geyser area where Old Faithful is. First uh, things first, when you come to Yellowstone in the summertime, you need to bring your patience. All the patience. Don't sweat it. You're going to sit in lines like this. It's 3.39 p.m. on a Wednesday in August. And we are sitting in this line. And I know why we're sitting in this line. Because I've been through this a few times now. Because I've been here for five days. But here's what I know. There's actually plenty of parking. Even for big rigs. You just gotta like. Take it slow. Plan on looping the parking lot a couple of times. Um, like this line is cause the old faithful entrance is got construction and there's a jiggy joggy and everyone gets confused and anyway, but once you're in the old faithful parking lot, like just keep driving around it because there's tons of parking and there's not designated parking for RVs or oversized vehicles It everybody, every just wherever you can fit it, but there's plenty of parking. And there's turnaround. So if you go all the way through and didn't find a spot you like, there's a there's a comeback. There's a turn back. So just make the loop again. Don't panic. Don't try to do something stupid. Just make the loop again. Anyway. So, yes. Bring your patience and you'll be fine. Just loop the loop. So how do you know that you're done with Yellowstone? Well, it's when your fellow Yellowstone visitors begin to drive you absolutely insane. Oh, I do believe we are at an elk jam. So, people think that even if it's not in the road, they just get to stop and hold up traffic and film that. Which you don't. Unless it's actively crossing the road, do not stop. Got your kids hanging out the sunroof. I'm not kidding. Kid is hanging out the sunroof. Yes, film it from your moving vehicle. Moving being the operative word here. Those aren't even, compared to the elk I had in my campground, those are little tiny elks. Look, the elk are looking at the cars like, why are y'all stopping? We're just like, here, what's the big deal? But no, we gotta hold up the traffic. That motherfucker sat there for like five minutes, holding up the whole road. Move, I'm gonna honk my horn and scare these elk away so that you people will drive. Fucking drive. Oh my God, I will run up the back of you. All of you. All of you assholes. Look, they're gone. They're gone. You can drive now. They went away. They're all gone. All gone. Go bye bye. They went back to the forest. But we're still, in case what, they jump out again? No, they're gone. <sighs> Alright, so that was my six days and five nights in Yellowstone. Um, hope you got some tips for that, especially if you're heading up there in your uh, camper van. And if you have any questions, leave them down below and I will see you on the road.